Good morning, good evening, wherever you are across the world and the universe. Welcome to my Quantum Living Podcast at the intersection of science and spirituality. I'm your host, Anna Anderson, quantum teacher, intuitive guide, and above all, an inquisitive soul. This podcast is about how we can bring the various spiritual, metaphysical, and esoteric concepts and ideas validated by quantum physics and modern cosmology to the very practical level to improve and enrich our life experience as individuals, communities, and the humankind. Whether you are listening to this show while driving or commuting, doing chores around the house, relaxing on a couch, or flying in a spaceship across the galaxy, I hope you'll enjoy today's episode. Okay, let's begin. Hello and welcome back to Quantum Living and to my new mini-series Quantum Chat, microdosing spiritual insights in a food-for-thought style, where in each episode, together with my special and returning guest, Marin Mute, we focus on just one topic, one burning question, one quantum mystery that probably everyone has a view on, but no real answer to, as we can only speculate and guess, which is fun. Hi, Maren. Thanks for joining me yet again for another exciting quantum chat. Hi, Anna. I'm ready and waiting to hear the question of today. <laughs> okay. So today's question is, what is the relationship between karma, free will, and destiny? This is again one of my top favorite topics. <laughs> Most people are familiar with these concepts and accept them as the fact of life. But there is an ongoing battle of views and opinions about their relationship with each other, which also defines their respective functions. The notion of karma can be disempowering. After all, we can't escape it. A gift of free will can be either empowering or overwhelming and scary depending on the person's point of view, as it is placing the responsibility for our life experiences squarely on us. The seal of destiny can be paralyzing in our endeavor to become more than who we think we can be. After all, if all is set in stone, why bother to make any effort or pursue any different ideas and choose a different pathway to create a different life? The relationship of free will versus karma and destiny in particular seems like a paradox, as these terms are semantically mutually exclusive. Either I have free will, or my life is being controlled by karma and destiny. I was grappling with this paradox for many years, in fact, until one day I received an insight in my meditation resolving the paradox. And the insight that came to me was, and I wrote it down exactly as it came through, and afterwards I had to think about it. <laughs> Destiny is a product of free will exercised by the soul in spirit between the incarnations. And karma is a product of free will exercised by the human ego during the incarnations. Life is a function of destiny, karma, and free will. So essentially, we have free will to design our new life experience in any way we want before we incarnate, when creating a blueprint for this life which becomes our destiny. Once we are born, however, our free will changes to what we do with this blueprint as it unfolds. So for example, Let's say that you chose in your blueprint to experience an addiction to drugs or alcohol. Now, it is left to your free will how you will experience it and what you will do with it. So you could succumb to it and die of a liver failure, or you could become involved in organized crime and die a violent death, or you might gather your strength, go through the rehab process, and then set up and run a support group for young addicts. In each scenario, you have gone through your destiny, 
which was open-ended as an experience rather than the outcome. And karma is the balancing act of our energy and experiences, I believe. It is a mechanism for learning, learning as a human being, not punishment. A good example is the so-called instant karma, with either a positive or negative experience, that's from the human perspective, as all experiences are neutral as energy, of course. And a very common scenario here is, say, when you swear, or even think something strongly negative, and within seconds you stab your toe, or a glass you are holding just flies off your hands, smashing on the floor. <laughs> which many people say, oh, you know, that's an instant karma. Or likewise, when you extend a helping hand to someone in need, and on your way back home, you find a $10 note. What are your thoughts about the relationship between karma, free will, and destiny? All right. <laughs> There's a lot to process. I'm going to answer this backwards a little bit. So we're going to look at karma first, and then we'll go into free will and determinism, which is basically destiny. Because I believe for me, that we are living out every possibility that this life has, both sides of every situation, that means that we are living out literally karma in real time. So there's no such thing for me as instant karma or long-term karma. <laughs> Karma is is just the idea that we are living out the yin and the yang of our life and what all that entails. We do that because this life experience needs to be whole, total, and complete, or you wouldn't be alive at all. There, You wouldn't be down here. No one's living point A to point B. We're not living a line and having something that we didn't learn here, so we have to come down, reincarnate to learn a lesson. That's just, it doesn't make any sense <laughs> scientifically, and it doesn't make any sense energetically, and it doesn't make any sense spiritually to do that. So we're living a whole total and complete life here. So we are literally living out karma as we speak. Now, free will and determinism. Our brain, and, and we have seen this in studies, has already made the decision before we even register the decision. So the decision is already made. And in that case, there is determinism. In that case, there is destiny, and you are always playing out your destiny. Every moment of every day, you are playing out your destiny. So how do we have free will then? Well, in order to have destiny, in order to have determinism, we have to have free will because it's going to end up harmonizing one another. So what does the free will look like? What is the only thing that you can somewhat control in this life? You can't control anything that happens outside this body. You actually can't even control anything that is happening within your body. But you can decide how you're going to react, respond, and behave in any situation. So how are you going to react, re respond, and behave? When decision-making, there's two things. One, you're going to end up playing both sides of that decision anyway, simultaneously at the exact same moment. And two, you can say, okay, how would I react, respond, and behave in this situation on this side of the choice? And how am I going to react, respond, and behave on this situation on this side of the choice? The reason why that's important is because once you make that decision, you have no control over what happens after making that decision to you. But you can say, I made this decision. I decided to cross the street to jaywalk and I got hit by a car. Okay. How am I going to handle that? Well, you the decision you made before you made that choice to cross the street, you said, I'm going to be calm and I'm going to, you know, not freak out. And so maybe you got hit by a car. It did, just knocked you down, didn't kill you or anything, but you were able to be calm. You were able to be settled and your body was able to absorb that shock a lot better without being injured. If you had made a decision to freak out, if you like, okay, I just can't handle this. I just can't do this. 
and I'm just going to run across the street right now really fast and you're already high strung, your body's going to respond differently physically to that hit, to that impact, and you'll end up probably in the emergency room, let's say, and with a lot more injury on your body. So that's my theory and that's my thought on this subject in a very simplistic form. <laughs> okay. I'd like to unpack this a little bit further. And I'd like to raise a couple of points. When you say that we make a decision that then which then unfolds, is it a conscious decision or unconscious or either or both? It's already made. So we feel like we're making that decision, but we we are already yeah, so at our conception, right when this little particle was born, this particle also died. And it played out every possible scenario that it could. And that means that it's playing out this real life karma. It's playing out both sides of everything. And that's what makes our life whole, total, and complete. So every decision that we make has already been made. It's already been made. It's already been done. It's like we're living the thunder after the lightning has already hit. <laughs> so we're are, we're just in the thought process of our consciousness. While somewhat scary, <laughs> it's very interesting what you just said, because I started asking these questions, you know, in my interviews with, with my guests who are in this sort of field of work, I started asking this question not long ago. And yes, I'm aware of those brain studies where it is proven that we make a decision about an emotional state before we actually see the picture, etc. So I think some people are familiar with this. But interestingly, I kept asking this question, when I make a decision of whatever, you know, could be my something minor, insignificant or huge decision in my life, am I actually making my decision at that point in time? Or was my decision and the whole process of me deciding and even sort of flipping between the the choices has already been predestined. And I've been getting this niggling and, and somewhat disconcerting feeling that this is actually the case. That even if I say, mm, or maybe I have chocolate ice, oh no, maybe vanilla, or oh, I don't know. And all this thinking and ultimately my decision has already been pre-programmed. So I'm basically playing out the program. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely playing it out. This is scary at some level. It can be. <laughs> but we have to remember that when we're decision making, we are assuming that the decisions are tangible. But we aren't even tangible. We are literally a hologram of vibrating molecular structure. So we're not even real. <laughs> so our decisions aren't even real. Now, the notion of karma teaches us that we are responsible, that we have the power to shape our destiny through our actions. It teaches us that we may not be able to choose the circumstances or situations we find ourselves in, but we have the power to choose how we're going to react, respond, and behave in these situations. That idea alone is incredible because it has immense power. It gives us personal li liberation and it shows us basically how we are all connected because we can't dictate and determine all the shoulds in the world. If I make a decision, this should happen with that decision, but we can't control that. And then we become disappointed when that should doesn't happen. I'm sorry, but there is a contradiction in what you just said, because first you said that all our decisions including the decision processes, have been already pre-programmed. Mm -hmm. And then you said that we have a free will to decide how we respond and react to a situation. Yeah, I was just getting there. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was talking about what the notion of karma, what people say, that it teaches us that we are responsible for our own happiness and we shape our destiny through our actions. That's the notion of karma. But basically, the decisions have already been made. The decisions are already there. We have, it's the decisions happen just like we are making our heart beat. We're not sitting here and concentrating on beat 
heart beat, heart beat, heart. The heart is already beating. The decision to have that heart beating is already there. It's the same as our decisions and the choices that we have. It's already been done. It's already been lived out. What we are experiencing now is the observation of these choices. Our consciousness is saying, okay, now I want to observe these choices. That's why observation is extraordinarily important. This is scary. Okay. <laughs> so let me ask you this question then, which was part of, of my uh, introduction of the topic. What I believe in is that we can truly exercise our free will as a soul, let's say, as a consciousness, as a soul, before incarnating. So in other words, we can decide, okay, hmm, what would I like to experience in this life? That maybe this, 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 and that, or maybe I'll change that. So in other words, do you believe that at that point of our spiritual journey, we can truly exercise free will in designing our destiny for each lifetime, which is a program effectively? So are we a free willed programmer? Are we a, a freelance programmer? <laughs> <laughs> not controlled by anything or anyone while we are in that in-between incarnation stage. Yeah. Okay. I think that what we need to do is reframe us being in an in-between state before we reincarnate. Okay. We need to get rid of that notion because it's extraordinarily confusing on how things work. Once this life is done, this life is done, that becomes a music note, it's whole, total, and complete. It holds all of its memory in the form of a resonance, a compassion, and it has its own uni ethereal code, basically, its own ether ethereal fingerprint. It's not going up and meeting with other souls and saying, okay, now I want to go learn this. And now I want to know what it's like to be a drug addict or be raped or to be abused because I want to learn more compassion. I want to learn patience and empathy. Okay, that's not how it's it's working. The free will, if we were to put it up there, would be your consciousness saying, I wonder how this particle and this particle combination, like if we were in the lab, put together, so that would be the mother and the father, put together. I wonder how that combination at that moment of inception is going to handle all of these things. I want to watch how that handles it. So imagine we put baking soda on the bottom and we put some vinegar and, and we're watching it. We're like, wow, it's really bubbling. That's pretty interesting. So that's basically what our consciousness is doing is it's saying, I'm curious onto this combination. And that curiosity created us and these particles. But we're not going into the ethereal space and saying, okay, now I want to experience these things. Because if that was what was happening, that would be putting us on a point A to point B life, a straight life, meaning that we couldn't experience those things in a different life or we didn't experience those things in a different life. So now we're coming back down to experience them in this particular life. But it wouldn't make any sense that way because you wouldn't actually be experiencing it the same way because you have a totally different vantage point. You have a totally different body. You have a totally different viewpoint of life. Uh, and the other thing is, is the ethereal space is all loving. It's all accepting. It's absolutely harmonious and beautiful, right? So why would someone going up into that space or going into that space then say, in order for me to learn how to be in this space and learn how to have compassion and I'm already here and in it, I need to go down and torture someone myself. I'm going to go down. I want to know what it's like to sell somebody on the sex trade. I want to know what it's like to get someone caught on drugs. I want to know what it's like to stab someone to death in order to learn love, compassion, forgiveness, patience. It doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway. <laughs> okay. 
Final probing question. If, as you say, our consciousness is curious and is observing the joining of the mother and the father energy and is curious what it will produce, it is leaving it to chance. It is not pre-programming. It is leaving it to chance, just like with an experiment. So we are, so essentially what I'm hearing is that we are experiments, but when you have an experiment and you are observing and you don't know the outcome and you're curious about the outcome, you are leaving it to chance. You are not pre-programming, oh yes, I want this, this, and this, and this happen. You're living out the quantum theory of the principle of least action. So right when the consciousness says, I want to see what happens with this, okay, these two combinations. So remember, we have free will and we have determinism, okay? So those come together. So right when the sperm and the egg hit and it creates a brand new particle, that particle is unique, can never be replicated, that's it. At that moment of inception is also the very moment of death on the ethereal plane, okay? Everything, so if we look at the principle of least action, what it's going to do is it's going to basically harmonize that particle. It's going to harmonize that particle. In order to harmonize that particle, that particle has to experience both sides to everything simultaneously. The exact same time, just like our inception had death, everything in between happened at the same moment. So you're playing out both sides of your choices all, and, and your consciousness wanted to see all of that. So it's not leaving it to chance. You're playing it all out, guaranteed. You're going to win the lottery. You're not going to win the lottery. You're going to get married. You're not going to get married. You have children. You're not going to have children. You're going to have a child that dies. You're not going to have a child that dies before you. You're going to have all of these experiments. You're going to have that thought and stub your toe, and you're going to have that thought, and you're not going to stub your toe. You're playing all of it out because it needs to balance each other out in order to create harmony, in order to create that individual resonance. So determinism is there. All of these things have already happened. The free will comes where your consciousness says, I wonder. That's free will. I wonder. Well, to me, this is not free will. This is curiosity, which is not the same as free will. <laughs> Okay, so there you go. A not so brief answer to the question, what is the relationship between karma, free will, and destiny? Or at least a lot of food for thought. Thank you, Maren. We'll speak again in the next edition of Quantum Chat. Thank you. And if you guys have feedback or want to leave a review, you're welcome to do so on Anna's website. The link will be in the description below and her email will be on her website. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you really loved it, please post a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify to encourage others to listen to it. For the show notes, guest and podcast info, reviews, comments, and much more, please visit quantumlivingpodcast.com. And if you'd like to dive deeper into quantum living and explore how you could work with me, please contact me and I'd be delighted to help and support you on your quantum journey. I am your host, Anna Anderson. I look forward to connecting with you in the next episode of Quantum Living. Until then, keep your vibrations high and be well.